Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to Fading Between Scenes in Unity. Today we're going to be taking a look at making a script that will allow us to fade out, change level and then fade back in with just a couple of lines of code that we can place anywhere in our game. So first off I'm going to select uh, an object, this could be any object, I'm just going to use the GM object and then I'm going to create a new script here. Let's call this fading. It's going to be of type C sharp. So double click it to open it up in mono develop. And let's start out by adding some variables. I excuse the quality of the recording. It's not as good as it, as it normally is, uh, but we're going to change that uh, in the next video. Don't worry. So the first variable is the texture 2D. We are going to call it fade out texture. And this is just the image that will overlay the screen. In our case, it's just going to be black. The next variable is a public float with the fade speed. This is of course the speed we will fade in and out at. Then we're going to make a private integer called draw depth and we are going to set this to minus a thousand. This is the textures um, draw order in the hierarchy, meaning that it will be drawn last and therefore it will render on top. So we're just making sure that the black image we are going to fade in and out is going to be on top of everything else. Then we make a private float with the alpha and we just set this uh, as with a default to 1. So it's going to start out by being completely visible. Then we make a private int called fade direction and we equal uh, or we default this to minus 1. This is the direction to fade. If it's equal to minus 1, it will fade in. And if it's equal to 1, it will fade out. Let's just go ahead and uh, delete the two functions here and make a new one called on GUI. And this is going to be uh, good for rendering different kinds of graphics. Um, so this is Unity's function for rendering uh, GUI. And uh, then first we're going to fade in and out the alpha value using a direction, a speed, and time dot delta time, which will convert the operation to seconds. So we do this by setting, saying alpha plus equals fade direction times fade speed times time dot delta time. Next up, we force, uh, or what is called clamp, the uh, value to be between 0 and 1. This is because the, uh, the GUI.color uses a alpha value between 0 and 1. So alpha equals math.clamp1 because that will clamp it between 0 and 1 and then we input the alpha. Next up, let's set the color of our GUI, in this case our texture or the black image. And uh, we really want the color values to just stay the same. The only value we want to change is the alpha, and this is included in the GUI.color. So do GUI.color equals new color. And inside of this, we're going to pass it the GUI color dot R for red, GUI color dot G, uh, dot G for green, and dot B for blue. And then we're going to type in the alpha at last. So here we are setting the alpha. Next up, we're going to GUI dot depth, and we're going to equal this to our draw depth. So here we are making sure that the black texture will render on top. Then we're saying gui.draw.draw texture. And inside of this, we are going to type new rect, which is four values. And inside of this rectangle, we are going to do 0, 0, screen.width, screen.height. So that means it will fill the whole screen. It will take the 0, 0 point, which is the top left corner, and it will extend to the width and the height 
using the fade out texture, meaning that we will overlay the fade out texture on the entire screen. So now we have actually written all the logic we need in order for the image to fade smoothly in and out. Now we just need some functions that will set the direction to fade in. And we are going to make these available from other scripts also. So here we are going to set the fade direction to the direction parameter, making the scene fade in if it's minus 1 and out if it's 1. So do public float begin fade with the parameter direction of type int. The reason why it's called a public float and not a public void is because we want it to return something. The thing we want it to return, the thing I've just written, is the fade speed. This will allow us in another script to have a variable be equal to the fade speed. And therefore we can easily uh, calculate the time that it will take to, take to fade out. And therefore time the application.load level. So we don't uh, load a new level before it's faded out or wait too long after. All you need to know it that, that is that it returns this value whenever the function is called. And we, we're going to see an example of how we can use this in a sec. Next up, we're going to do an onLevelWasLoaded function in order to uh, call the begin fade whenever a level loads. So this way we're just going to automate the fading whenever uh, a level is loaded and therefore we're going to fade in every time we uh, play a new scene. And of course we're going to call the function with the fading direction of minus 1, meaning that we will fade in. You could also set the alpha to 1 right before should your alpha not be equal to 1 by default. Or if you uh, change it in other ways. That's maybe a good idea um, depending on your game. So if it's behaving weirdly, try that out. Now we can save the script and we're actually ready to head over to Unity. So if we select a GM object, you can see that we have two new variables. The first one, the fade out texture, we're simply going to set to a black image. This image you can find on the internet or you can create for yourself. It's really simple and you can see here the import settings for my image. It's just a 2x2 two two texture, meaning that it's only 2 pixels wide. The fade speed, I'm just going to leave at 0 0.8. And then now let's take a look at the Squixel. The Squixel in my game is a pickup that will change scenes whenever the player collides with it. So let's open up the script for this. In here there's a bunch of logic. All we need to worry about is the function called changed level. And inside of this function there's only three lines of code that handles the fading out and the level changing. So this fades out the game and loads a new level. Let's have a look at the first line. This statement uses gameObject.find to find the object that the script is sitting on. It just finds the object with called underscore gm. If your object is called something else, of course change this to your object's name. It's generally a bad idea to use gameObject.find a lot because it's taxing on the computer. So if you need to do this a whole bunch, I recommend you do it at the in the start of the game. Also, we then use get component to find the fading script on that game object. We're going to change the fade to fading in just a sec. That was just a mistake. Then we do dot begin fade to call the function. We can do this because we've made the function public and therefore it's accessible from this script. Then we pass it the parameter 1 because we want it to fade out. We also create a new variable, a float variable, that stores the fade time, which was called fade speed in the other script. We can use this to time when, uh, the, um, when the application will actually load a new level. So we can use this uh, simply to time the yield statement that you see here. So this is a yield statement and it will wait for amount, uh, a certain amount of seconds. And here we wait for fade time. Keep in mind that whenever you're using a yield statement, 
you can't do it inside of the update function and you need to create a separate function to store it in. Next up, we have the application.load level. This just loads the new level. This is where you pass it an index of your level, which we're going to take a look in a sec when we're going to add our level to the build settings. So that was all we needed to do. Now let's change fade to fading to correct the mistake. And let's hit back into Unity. Now this is important. Go to File, Build Settings. And here you can see all of the scenes that will be included in your build. Whenever changing scenes through code, they need to be in the build settings. So you can see we have the fading, main level 1 and 2. And over here on the right is the index. If your scene is not on the list, hit add current and it will add the selected scene. So that was basically all for now. If you're interested in more tutorials like this one, go to brackies.com or visit me on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash brackies. You can also follow me on Twitter at Brackey Street. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.